Welcome back, my lovely, trashy, anime-loving weebs and otakus. It's your favorite cat girl boy, Otaku no Fuji, with another anime review. This time, it's the classic slice-of-life slash harem comedy, Haganai, a show that I'm giving a 4 out of 10. Yeah, I'm surprised too. I've just been reviewing shows that I like so far, and I wasn't sure that I was ever going to actually rate anything that low. But I've been re-watching Haganai and found I have a lot to say about it. As always, if you enjoy the review, or any of our other videos, please like and subscribe. It really helps the channel if you do. It literally doesn't change anything for big channels, even though they keep hammering it into you, but it makes a huge difference for the little guys. Anyway, Haganai. This review will cover both the first season as well as Haganai Next, because this is a train wreck that has to be addressed in its entirety. The show is about a group of kids who form a high school club to help them make friends. They're all awkward in their own unique ways that makes making actual genuine friends difficult. So the purpose of the club is to teach them how to make friends with other normal functional people. Except, they don't ever actually accomplish anything because their personalities are generally awful. They have a deeply rooted preconception that normal people, the very normal people that they want to be friends with, are all sluts or assholes or two-faced liars or con artists, so they have all sorts of reasons to not want to do normal stuff. Plus, some of them are agoraphobic and afraid of people to begin with, so it never goes anywhere. But they keep going on and on, episode after episode, about how they want to make real friends, completely ignoring the fact that they've all become friends with each other and don't really need anyone else. Of course, that stated objective of trying to make friends quickly becomes just an excuse to meet every day because the actual goal of the female members of the club is to snag the lone male member who has inexplicably attracted a bevy of beautiful babes around him. He's the typical harem protagonist, of course, who pretends to not want any of them because he doesn't want to ruin the group dynamic. But that ultimately builds up until the climax of season two where it all blows up in his face because the girls get tired of waiting for him to pick one of them. This is yet another romance anime where so much would be solved if the characters would actually say what they wanted. But it's a Japanese cultural thing to rely on nonverbal communication and expect that other people can infer what you mean. It works great in actual real-world society, don't get me wrong, but in anime the main characters are always morons who ignore the subtle and not-so-subtle hints when girls are literally throwing themselves at them. In this case, though, it's kind of understandable why he doesn't want to pick any of them, because for the most part, they're psychos or lollies. Let's start with Yozura, who fills the role of childhood friend, who thinks she's entitled to the main character by default. But she's the most stubborn and agoraphobic out of all of them in her absolute reluctance to interact with other people. And she's a horrible, selfish bitch! that has the worst personality I think I've ever seen in an anime. She's so, so, so awful and bitter and spiteful. Forget about being lovers. I don't know how you could stomach even being friends with her. She single-handedly ruins the show for me. Next is Sena Kashiwazaki, who is pretty much the poster girl for the franchise. She's rich and ridiculously attractive, but she doesn't have a personality other than being completely obnoxiously full of herself because she's rich and ridiculously attractive. Being blonde and blue-eyed with huge boobs is not a personality. She's basically a sex doll whose only purpose is to be eye candy and be the target of Yozura's spiteful bullshit. Then there's Rika, who is the best girl in season one. She's the only one in the entire show that actually says what she wants but her extreme bluntness kind of gets tiring after a while. Rika is the quirky genius type who is all like, let's have sex for science, but probably wouldn't actually do it if you called her bluff. In season two, she goes totally nuts though, as she's just tired of everyone else's garbage and just starts getting mean-spirited. You love her in season one, but kind of hate her in season two. Yukimura is a ridiculously cute girl who pretends to be a boy, even though she's a ridiculously cute girl. And that's about it. She's really sweet though, and takes over as best girl in season 2 pretty much by default because she's not a psycho. And then there are the lollies. The main character's little 13 year old sister Kobato and 10 year old sister Maria, because she's an actual nun. They're just pedo bait who are shown nude multiple times. I suppose you could argue the whole show, and anime in general I guess, is pedo bait since the girls are all under 18, but there's a difference between mature-looking, big-honking bazonkaroos and flat-chested, young-looking little girls. One is supposed to at least appear older and legal, and it's a cartoon, so who gives a shit? 
and the other is supposed to look very young, which is ultimately absolutely incredibly problematic and unnecessary. So the story sucks and doesn't go anywhere, the characters are mostly terrible, and there are problematic lollies. Does Hog and I do anything well? It's occasionally funny, I guess, and it's occasionally relatable, though these characters are generally so far off from the norm, even among people that struggle with making friends, that their relatability for the Watcher is questionable at best. It does look good at least, and the older girls do all look pretty nice. But you can watch so many other far better shows for eye candy that I don't think it's worth putting up with Hagen Eye's nonsense just to ogle Senna. I want to add that I do think season 1 is better than season 2 because at least it's sort of fun, while season 2 really ups the drama and Yozura, Senna, Rika just get incredibly awful and unbearable. I guess it's supposed to subvert your expectations of typical harem shows by focusing on what would probably actually happen when the protagonist plays around for three years and never chooses someone. In anime, they're all too willing to just stick around and wait it out. In real life, these girls would bolt after a week. The problem here is that it isn't especially entertaining, and also it isn't relatable because, as I mentioned, the girls are all psychos that a sane person wouldn't want anyway. So you don't end up empathizing with the girl or the guy. In the end, I can't really recommend Hagenai. Normally, I really don't mind shows that are ultimately just shallow fan service, but most of those other shows are more fun and more comedic and or sexier and don't bombard you with endless waves of awful like Hagenai does. I hate how the story goes and I hate the characters. And you can see anime boobs elsewhere. I won't say to skip it entirely because pretty much every show is fun to watch once, but go in with low expectations. So that was Hagenai. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll have more anime reviews, fan service games, top 10 lists, tier lists, and more, so please like and subscribe.